Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 282. Page 282 and today is our lesson number 110. The problem number 86 is what we're going to do right now. Let's turn to it. Let's turn to page 282. Problem number 86. Question simply is how much is How much is B plus C? That's all they're looking for. What's the quant what's the value of B plus C? Now notice they're not looking for individual value of B and C. Nobody's asking us what B is, nobody's asking us what C is individually. They're asking us what is their sum. Let's see what they give us in the first statement. Problem 86 it was. In the first statement they tell us that a times B plus C times D plus A times C plus B times D equals a 6 equals a 6 now notice notice in the first term here we have AB and here we have CD there's nothing common there there's nothing common at all but if you compare the first term AB and AC, we can take out A common. And if you take out A common, we'll be left with B plus C, which is exactly what we're looking for here. On the other hand, on the other hand, instead of looking at this term, had we gone to the last term, we would have had, we would have had AB and BD. If we take out B common from there, we end up with A plus D. A plus D, and similarly, in the middle two ones, we take out C, we'll end up with A plus D. Let's see what happens. I'm curious. Let's do that. I'm curious. It probably won't work out because this, this straightforward way is to go through this one and that one. But I'm curious as to what happens if we were to take the last one. So if we take AB plus BD, move this one here, and then we have CD, and then we have AC. Even though I know I have a very strong feeling that this is the wrong way, but I'm curious. So if we take out the B, A plus D, you see we're not interested in A plus D. Oh, we will, it will work out actually. We have a B here, we have a C here. What do you know? And uh, C, if we take out the C, we'll end up with A plus D. Voila. So we're looking at these two terms, this term and this term, and then we're looking at this term and this term. Now the question is, what is common between this term and that term? And this, in the first part, B times A plus D and C times A plus D, what is common is this part, A plus D. We take out the A plus D common, if we take it out common, and then from the first term we left with B, and from the second term we'll be left with C. Because you see, AD times B is going to give us B times AD, which is B times A plus D, which is this part right here, and then A plus D times C is exactly right here. So that's it, we're done. And this, this all of this thing we know is equal 6. All of this equals 6. But the question is, are we able to tell what B plus C is? We cannot answer what B plus C is unless we know the value of A plus D. And since we do not have the value of A plus D, the first statement by itself does not do the job. The first statement by itself does not do the job. A, D, B, C, E. B, C, E. Because the first statement by itself does not do the job, the answer cannot be A or D. Let's look at second statement. In the second statement, they tell us that A plus D, A plus D, is 4. Oh, what do you know? A plus D is equal to 4. Again, A, I, should, I shouldn't have made that comma. What do you know? That part is coming up in a 5 seconds. A plus D by itself, again, does not do anything. Simply knowing that A plus D is 4 is not going to help us figure out what is B plus C. So second statement by itself also is no good. Therefore, answer cannot be B. But if you were to put them together, if you were to put them together, 1 and 2, 
you put them together, then now we know that a plus d times b plus c equals 6, and, and we know that a, a, a plus d is 4. If a plus d is 4, then of course we can figure out what b plus c is. b plus c must equal 6 over 4. That's it. So putting them together, putting them together does the job. Individually, individually these two statements are no good. Therefore the answer is C. Therefore the answer is C. Now listen, before we go to the next one, before we go to the next question, I'm curious as to what would have happened. So you see we started out with the first term a, a plus a, a, a times b, and then we took the very last one, b d, because we realized a, b, and c, d had nothing in common. But we could have gone to the third statement. Uh, third term rather, which is what I want to do right now and see what happens, okay? We're going to redo this thing just out of curiosity very quickly, it'll only take a few seconds and, uh, and let's see what would have happened. So instead of BD, instead of BD, if we were to combine A, B, A times B and A times C, is it BD? I don't, I don't want to mess it up. What's the last one BD? That's right. Let's combine these two now. So AB plus AC and then CD is going to come out, CD plus the BD. So now, between this term and this term, we have A common, take out A common, and we're left with B plus C. Because you can see A times B is going to give us our AB, and A times C is going to give us our AC right here. And now, in this, in this term and this term, we have D common. D is the common part here. Take it out common, and we're left with B plus C. Or technically, it comes out to be, it comes out to be, C plus B, but of course you're not going to write it as C plus B, it's, it's better to write it as B plus C. It looks better. So we here we have B plus C and here we have B plus C. We can take it out common. This part is common in both of them. So if you take out B plus C, we're left with here, here we're left with A, and here left, we're left with D. There we go. And again, by itself, as obviously it's not going to do anything, because all we know is that this equals 6. But what's the value of BC? We, we cannot tell without the AD. Anyway, so that was it. So the together, putting the two statements together actually provides us sufficient information to answer the question. The question was how much is B plus C? And B plus C turns out to be uh, because, because in the second statement they tell us that A plus D is 4, therefore B plus C is 6 over 4, or 3 over 2, or 1 and a half. The answer is C. Let's do the next one, shall we? Let's do the next question. Number 87. Of course, all of this was not necessary. We just have to be able to recognize that there is enough information. We don't actually have to do it out. You understand? It's just that when the thing is so simple, I can't help myself. In 87, they're asking us, in 87, they're asking us, what is the average? What is the average of J and K. That is how the question is phrased. What is their average? Let me actually read, uh, read it verbatim. 87. What is the average of J and K? Exactly. That's exactly what they say. What is the average of J and K? We have to understand and we have to realize at this point that this is the same as asking, this is same as asking, what is their sum? These two questions are, these two questions are one and the same. Because if we know their sum, we divide that by 2 and we'll have the average. So it's the same thing. So that's we have to understand that we're looking for their, their sum. So the, as, lo, as long as we can figure out what j plus k is, that's all we need. Let's see what they give us in the first statement. In the first statement they tell us that the average of j plus 2 and k plus 4 is 11. But well, there you go. That's enough. If we know the average of these two quantities, then we simply have to add up this quantity and that quantity, divide by 2, and that equals 11. And that will enable us to figure out what their sum is, j plus k is. This statement by itself is enough. A, D, B, C, E. Because the first statement by itself is enough, the answer cannot be B, C, or E. It would have to be either A or a D. The part that I'm about to do right now, it is not something that you will do in the real exam. It will be a waste of time, a sheer waste of time. But here, we are not taking the real exam. Let's do it out. I'm curious, just for learning purposes. J plus 2, this quantity right here, and K plus 4, 
we are told that their average, their average is 11. How do you find the average of two quantities? Well, we add them up and divide by 2. And that has to equal to 11. That has to equal to 11. Multiply both sides of the equation by 2, so that we can get rid of this 2. And now we find that j plus k, j plus k, plus 2 and plus 4, which is plus 6, equals 22. Therefore, j plus k is simply 22 minus 6. j plus 2, j plus k is simply 22 minus 6, you see. It's, it's very easily, the, their sum can very easily be figured out. Their individual values is impossible to figure out, but they are not, we are not looking for the individual value of j and k. We are simply interested in knowing what j plus k is. Because once we know j plus k, we can figure out their average. The first statement does the job. Let's look at second statement. Second statement says the average of average of J, K, and 14 is 10. Again, we should realize immediately that how do we how are we going to find their average? J K and 14. We're going to add them all up and divide by 3 and therefore we'll, we'll have the sum of the J and K in that expression. The second statement by itself is also enough because the first statement by itself was enough. We realized the answer could not be B, C or E. Now we find the second statement by itself is also enough. Therefore the answer is D. Again, we're going to quickly do it out just for learning purposes. So here we have J plus K plus 14. And how do you find how do you find the average of three numbers? We add them up and divide by the number of quantities. We have three of them, and that equals we are told ten. Therefore, their sum must be thirty. Their sum must be thirty. Therefore, j plus k plus fourteen equals thirty, and that implies in turn that j plus k equals oh, well thirty minus fourteen j plus k equals 30 minus 14 and that's it. Again, as long as we have their sum, we have their average. So second statement by itself also does the job. And therefore the answer is d as we said. And that was the end of it. And that's all she wrote. That's the end of our show today. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.